you up to Sacramento? Well, actually, my dad uh, job got transferred, so he came up here and uh, he came to give us a date. Pardon me, he came here in the uh, summer of 1965, between my sophomore and junior year. And then uh, he moved into Carmichael. And then the first day of school, um, you know, my brother was in the lower wing. He was a freshman, and I was in the upper wing. I was a junior. And the uh, first day of school, I, uh, I looked around, man, and I didn't see Mexicans. I didn't see blacks. <laughs> I, saw, I, think, I already uh, know this part. <laughs> I, think I think I saw one Asian girl. <laughs> and I saw my brother at lunchtime. I said, hey, man, you, you don't see anything kind of strange around here? Yeah. But my dad did for once. And so my brother, I said, man, I don't see anything. Any other black kids around here? And my brother said, "Man, me neither. It's you." <laughs> and we went the whole day, and the next day, and the next week, and then, then we decided that it was just us. And then I remember uh, about two days after we moved in, uh, there were some all these for sale signs, man, and uh, across the street. And then this one mean guy across the street told my little sister, who was in elementary school, to get on her side of the street. And uh, my dad had a fit, and so it got, you know. Uh, you know, it wasn't easy. It was a good thing for my family and us that we were athletes. Yeah. It was after the first game, I think I scored like three or four touchdowns, and the for sale signs came down. But it still, <clears throat> still wasn't, um, you know, it was still a little <laughs> difficult, you know, socially. Yeah. You, know, and you and I have talked know. about this. You recall, yeah. we have a few talks. No, we have quite a few talks. About I remember uh, you tell me at one time you, you, you actually felt like, you're kind of like a white guy. You it, you'd gotten so used to it. Oh, I you know, really get you know, used to it. Whatever was going on, but you you not used to it. But you know what you do? You learn to adjust. You adjust. And so what happened? You know what 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 happened is is that um, uh, you know after a while it got so so difficult. Really, my dad didn't believe in complaining. I mean, he didn't want to hear any complaints, and he would always ask us if he had any complaints about what was going on or whatever. You know, he'd always refer to Martin Luther King with, you know, what would Jackie Robinson do? And that's you know, one of the guys that influenced me a lot was Mr. McCulley, Eli, Eli McCullough, my basketball coach. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because he's the one that kind of I would talk to about things, you know, he and my dad. Um, you know, but like I said, you know, my dad didn't really want to hear any complaint. You know, he'd tell me to deal with it. And, uh, and you still stayed with three sports through high school? Well, actually, I played four because of uh, uh, Bobby Bonds. And then I went to the state track meet in the long jump oh. down in San Diego, I think, at San Diego, I think Balboa Stadium, I think, in San Diego. And I was trying to be like Bobby. And uh, Bobby has had the long jump record uh, until the year we went there. Then Jerry Proctor broke it. Uh, he went to John Muir, I think, out of Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like I said, I wanted to be like Bobby. So Bobby jumped 23, no, Bobby jumped 25, 3 or something, and I was a mini Bobby. I jumped like 23, 10 or 24, 1 or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but, you know, I was trying to be like Bobby. And uh, that's what Bobby did. Because Bobby, whatever events were left, he'd run, go over and run, put his track shoes on and use, leave his uniform on and run track. The same thing I did. Then they started like, they started like, you know, putting 100 and 220 at the end of the track meets so I could run instead of the beginning of the track meets. And some of the other coaches around didn't like it and stuff. So, like I said, I wanted to be, you know, everything like Bobby. The thing that had hurt me, though, it hurt me where I was drafted, you know, because I was, I was trying to satisfy the scouts. And I didn't hit very good my senior year. My junior year, I, I, I hit the ball well, but I wasn't a home run hitter ever until I started. We got in the pro ball. I remember I had one. So you were you drafted out of high school? Yeah. By the 20, Braves? 25th round by the Braves. By the Braves. 25th round, folks. Yeah. It does. And see, and I didn't. Attention. Well, but I didn't really want to play baseball. Oh, really? No, not really. Because, like, my parents got divorced my senior year. And so Bobby was playing by then, though, right? Yeah, but Bobby was playing. Okay. Yeah, but that didn't have anything. I wanted to play basketball or football in college. And then my dad made me sign a letter of intent to go to the University of Santa Clara to play basketball which was another predominantly white school like I had just come from. And, you know, they were Catholic and, you know, they, they you know, they weren't known for, you know, for girls and stuff too much. And then my dad, I, I wanted to go to ASU to play football or, you know, San Jose State maybe play basketball and you only had to have like 2.1 or 2 to stay eligible. I'd do that stand on my head and have the time too. So I remember going over to this man's house named Mr. Winterout, one of my teammates. And Mr. Winterout, 
was the first parent that I ever saw to get that got Playboy magazine. And so in the Playboy magazine that we were supposed to be looking at, it said that the one, two party schools in the country was Arizona State and San Jose State at that time. So, you know, I don't know how my dad found out, and I didn't want to ask him. Because <laughs> we didn't have playboys around our house, and my dad was, was in the church. And so I was like, my dad goes, no, boy, you can't go to those schools because they're the one, two party schools in the country. So I'm like, I wanted to ask him, man, you been over Mr. Winterrock's house? <laughs> I had a nerve to ask him because you'd ask my dad those kind of questions. What's it to you, son? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, maybe this is a professor of That's what I was going to say. So, <laughs> and so anyway, you know, uh, my mom and I, I was about, mm, I made a number of all-star teams in football and basketball. We were supposed to go to Mexico. I was playing Legion. I hit 229 my senior year. I struck out. I was trying to hit home runs, and I wasn't that kind of hitter. I tell kids now to don't worry about the scouts or don't worry about uh, uh, doing things to satisfy others. You have to satisfy you know, yourself and be yourself, which is hard to do. And here I was trying to hit home runs, man, and I was just failing miserably. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't even think I'd get drafted. I wasn't even worried about it. And then Mr. Bill White, who's a, like a long shot scout, he had signed Joe Morgan, who they said was too little. He had signed me, who was too skinny, and signed Keith Hernandez after me, you know, kind of long shot mm -hmm. scout guy. And, and, and he came around and came around and came around, and every time he'd come around, you know, my dad was short, and my mom and dad had gotten separated by then. And so the price kept going up and up and up, and I couldn't go to Mexico. I couldn't play an Optimus football game up here because everybody wanted to know. They didn't think I was serious about baseball. And so then my team went to the uh, American Legion Finals in the state in Yachtville, and, uh, you know, I had an outstanding American Legion. My price, my stock went up and up and up. And that's when I, I faced Bob Forrest and, uh, and uh, God rest his soul in Woodland. I faced Bart Johnson from uh, Santa Ana, I think he was, down in uh, Yachtville. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing against some pretty good guys. And uh, so I got drafted by the Braves. And then that night before, I prayed. I said, Lord, whatever you do, don't let me get drafted by the man. <laughs> I didn't want to go to the South. Because then the South was no joke. And uh, anywhere. I mean, they had riots and racial unrest. And I remember... This is 1968, 67. 67. Oh, yeah. And, okay. and, you know, I mean, Freedom Marches in Selma, Alabama, and Joey Wallace and Lester Maddox, and it was, it was, it was alive, man. And uh, so the next, that day I got drafted. Dusty Bay, congratulations, you've been drafted by the You got the call. Braves. I said, no, not the Braves. Oh, Lord, you didn't hear me. <laughs> and that ended up being one of the best <laughs> things that happened to me because I flew to L.A., me and my mom, there's a guy there waiting for you, wasn't there? Yeah, with well, this guy there named Hank Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's when I first met Mr. Aaron. And I was 18 years old, and I didn't know what I was going to do or what was going on. And, um, you know, I, I asked Mr. Aaron, I went, what should I do? What do you think? And he says, if you have enough confidence to, that by the time that you are in the big leagues, that your class would have graduated, your graduating class would have graduated. And so I gave myself that, that meant that I, I just turned 18, and that meant I'd been 22. And uh, that's exactly how it worked out. <clears throat> I went away to play ball. I didn't tell my dad. And uh, I had Hub Kittle as my first manager. <laughs> and uh, Hub called my dad to tell him what, what had happened. And my dad said, uh, excuse me, sir, put my boy back on the line. And he says, hey, man, if you're, you're not man enough to tell me yourself, don't have some stranger tell me. Goodbye. I'll see what I got on. You know, so I went home. Vietnam was hot then, so you had to go to school to pass, and you had to have 15 units per semester, or else you were drafted in between semesters. No incompletes, no F, no nothing. I went to American River College, still played football and basketball on the side, like I wasn't supposed to. My mom called my scouts, said what I was doing, and um, and uh, so um, you know, I worked out and worked out. And, well, first I got home, and I remember this knock on the door of my mom's house, and I could serve papers by this little lawyer, I mean, by this little courier guy. And uh, and I'd been served to come court me and my mom and our lawyer against my dad and his lawyer to try to nullify my contract. That's how I'm saying. And so, Your baseball contract? Yeah. Ooh. And so Man. I couldn't do it because my mom was my trustee, and so um, they took my money and uh, let me buy a car. And I got an allotment as long as I was in school, which I was on scholarship. 
to baseball too. And so they big bonus it. money back then. Wasn't it? Well, it wasn't bad. I got second round money as a 25th round draft choice. You know what I mean? Which I thought was big money. Wow. And, you know, and um, you know, my mom did my contract. She loaded it up as as well as you could do it. And uh, you know, not, not a lot of negotiating going on back then. So. Well, but there was for us. Some. Yeah. No, there was quite a bit. I mean, they. I'm, not after the signing, now you're just kind of... No, 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 but they came around like 10 times, and every time they came around, they went up like three or four more thousand. Oh, and no. so, yeah, and so, uh, you know, like I said, my mom did my contract, I think, I don't know what I got, 19 to 20,000 plus some uh, scholarship money, plus, you yeah, know... The old the incentive, incentive program back then. Incentive program, which is huge. to $7,500. Yeah, give me some, brother. I got mine. I got mine. <laughs>